by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله my dear viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to our program, Rise and Shine. Let's begin our program, our show, our morning by listening to the recitation of the glorious Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم Let's listen to the Naat of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Salli ala nabiyyina Salli ala محمد پڑھئے صلی علی شفیعنا صلی علی محمد پھر کے گلی گلی تباہ ٹھوکر سب کی کھا موجہ 
ठीक मिल रही है मेरा काम चल रहा है मुझे ठीक मिल रही है और मेरे दिल उसे मानती है दुनिया उसे ढूंढती है मन मंजिल उसे मानती तो कदरिया 
you are watching rise and shine today it is all about removing those ill thoughts from your mind which ill thoughts am i referring to i'm referring to superstition yes this is today's topic today inshallah i shall be speaking a little about superstition what is Superstition, my dear viewers of Mandan channel, and I'll put it out straight away that superstition has no reality. There's no such thing, there's no, you know, belief of superstition, my dear viewers of Mandan channel, in our religion, no. There are those things which are in accordance to the Sharia, those things which are against the Sharia. Anything which is against the Sharia, we leave those things, we abandon those things. If there is something which, yes, we have been told about in our Sharia, then that's another matter. That's another matter, my dear viewers. For example, you know, you shouldn't send your children out at night. You know, this is something proven by the Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He ordered that do not send the children out at night. That's fine. This is not superstition, my dear viewers. Superstition is that thing which has not been proven. It's just made up from our minds, you know, that there is either a particular time, a particular object, a particular place, you know, a day, a month, a year even, where people think that something bad will happen during this time. And they think that just due to this object, just seeing this object, just being on this day, just coming by this person, this that means that say there will be bad luck for me. No, my dear viewers. Remember, firstly, let's look at in terms of days, in terms of time. You know, time we have days, we have months, we have years, my dear viewers of Muslim channel. There are blessed years. You know, the most blessed of years were those when Rasulullah was here on the earth physically in his lifetime. We have blessed months, for example, the month of Ramadan. The entire month of Ramadan, it is that month, my dear viewers of Madan Channel, when, you know, Futihat Abwab al Jannah, the gates of Jannah are open, and the gates of hell are closed, and the shayateen are locked up in chains. When, by performing one deed, the one the reward of a nafal act you gain the reward of a farz act my dear viewers by performing a farz act an obligatory action the reward is multiplied by 70 undoubtedly this month is a month of blessings it is a honorable month it is a great month so we get months which are exceptional which are greater than other months we also get days my dear viewers which are greater than other days for example we have the day of you know when the hujjaj are in muzdalifa you know is mentioned that that night they spend there is even greater than the night of laylatul qadr and then undoubtedly we also have laylatul qadr the night of power about which it is mentioned within the holy quran that it is khairun min alfi shahr it is even better than a thousand months. If you were to worship in that one night, you gain more reward than if you were, or it is better for you than if you were to worship for one thousand months. Subhanallah. So this day is great. So we have, you know, great years, we have great months, we have great days. And we even have great, you know, hours, you can say, minutes of the day, moments of the day. You know, it's mentioned that there are some moments of the day, for example, a Friday, in between the khutbah, 
in between the khutbah Madi viewers of Madani channel when the Imam says it said that that time is a special moment it is a time when du'as are accepted and also mentioned before Maghrib Salah on the same day there are those times Madi viewers when du'as are closer to be accepted so we do have you know moments or particular times which are greater than other times but what we don't have this is what you need to understand this is the lesson for today my dear viewers of Allah, the topic is superstition what we don't have is a year which is cursed we don't have a year which is cursed you know we had for example what is known as a year of sorrow during the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that just it didn't mean the entire year was of sorrow no that was just referring to two sad events which took place during that year you know the passing away of the beloved wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hazrat Khadija al-Kubra radhiyallahu ta'ala anha similarly the passing away of Abu Talib somebody who helped him who aided the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much who granted him protection when people were mazala trying to harm him so for this year, and you know, this is known as a year of sorrow by others, my dear viewers. So what we must understand is there's no such year which is, you know, just due to the year itself. You know, you may have somebody passed away this year, so that was a sad year for you. That's fine. But it's not due to the year itself that it's sad year. We do not have any particular month which is bad because of the month itself. Muharram, a blessed month. Safar, a blessed month. Rabi'ul Awwal, subhanallah, in which Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala was sent to this world. Rabi'ul Akhir, Jumad al Awwal, and it continues and continues and continues. You know, we have months like Ramadan, we have months like even Zulqa'da, mazallah. People think Zulqa'da is a bad month. You know, the number three, the day three, day 13, day 23, anything with the number three in it. And similarly, eight, 28, and the day 18 also. People think, you know, these are accursed days. No, my dear viewers. So, inshallah, today, there will be many things. SubhanAllah, I have the book, you know, Amir Ali Sunnah Dawud Barakatuh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him so much. And I've written an entire book. And I was thinking, you know, what sort of superstitions do we have? And mashallah, when I was reading the book, you know, there were so many I came across. And I'd like to share them with you. The reason being is because these also do apply to us in this day and age. You know, some people may think and is, you know, sometimes they do think that no, no, this used to be during the olden times people used to have this. No, we have them nowadays too. One example, the number 13. Everybody, well, I wouldn't say everybody, majority of the people, especially in this country. You know, since we're in school, we are taught that the number 13 is an evil number. The number 13 has bad luck to it. I remember, subhanAllah, we once went on a trip. And, you know, we went to a hotel. And this hotel, as a child, subhanAllah, and this hotel... They, it was numbered, obviously the doors were numbered, one, two, three, four, etc. And he went to number 12, and then he went to number 14. The reason being is because they consider 13 to be bad luck, so they miss out the entire number. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, 13 is an odd number. You know, in Allah Ta'ala, witrun wa yuhibbul witr. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala Himself, He is one. One is an odd number. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves our numbers. Now dear viewers of Madani channel, there is nothing wrong with the number 13. Okay? There is nothing wrong with the number 13. It doesn't mean, you know, if you've got, let's just say, subhanAllah, you were doing something and you were given, you know, everybody was numbered. Number 1, number 2, number 3, etc. You were number 13. It doesn't mean that just because you were number 13, you are going to lose. No, there could be other reasons. There could be other reasons. And this is what affects our minds so much. This is one of the harms of thinking like this, of superstition. And that if I was given number 13, and if I was to believe that number 13 was a bad number, then automatically I would feel sad. 
that preparation which I had, you know, done, I had prepared for this, whatever it may be, you know, I was ready for this, I was training for this, but because I was given the number 13, my level of, you know, energy levels went from there all the way to down here. From there, my dear viewers, all the way to down here, just because I've got the number 13. Although I've not even tried. But now, just because I have this in my mind, automatically everything will change. Whatever it is I am doing, let's just say, subhanAllah, we were participating in Zehniya's Maish. A competition, any competition. If I have this mindset that due to the number 13, I am going to lose automatically my thinking levels, everything will come down. And I will perform, my performance levels, my dear viewers, would come down, rushing down. And maybe due to this I will lose. Not due to the number, but due to me considering this number to be a bad omen. Just me being superstitious when it comes to this number, my dear viewers of Mother Islam. The number 13, the number 13 is something which is extremely famous. Now there are many other things which are famous. As mentioned, there was once a king. And this, this I love this story, subhanAllah, honestly, I love this story, my dear viewers. Inshallah, you too will enjoy it. It said that there was a king, and you know, kings, they go and they love, especially in the olden days, they go and they love to hunt. Hunt animals, hunt birds, you know, big animals in the wild. We hardly have a wild nowadays. So this king goes with his royal procession, and they come towards the city walls and they're coming outside. Now, when everybody sees that it's the king that's going, you know, he doesn't just go like an ordinary man. Everybody knows when the king's there, everyone knows he's the king. And the king's passing by, everybody knows the king's passing by. You know, we must move out of the way. So this king, along with his entourage, you can say, along with his people, he is traveling to go and do his hunting. Now, Everybody is moving out of his way. When he comes towards the city walls, he sees something or somebody in the distance. And then gradually that thing or that person comes closer. He considers for a person to be coming in the way of the royal procession when the king is going to hunt as an evil omen, as a bad sign, something bad is going to happen. So now he becomes angry, he's ferocious. How dare such an individual come in my way? He's going to give me bad luck throughout the entire day. He sees this person is a one-eyed man. He becomes even more angry. One-eyed man, Allah Akbar. People think one-eyed man, bad luck. So when that one-eyed man gets close to the king, ferocious, angry, he says to his men, chain him up. Grip him, take hold of him, and chain him up, tie him up, Tie him against this place over here. I'm not going to deal with him now. I don't wish to see him anymore. I've seen him enough. He's brought me bad luck enough already. I don't wish to see him anymore. I'm just tie him up on the side. When I come back, I'll deal with him. So this is exactly what the people do. His people, his army, his guards, whoever they may be, they tie him up and they place him to the side. The king then continues on his journey, he goes to the jungle and he realizes, you know, whenever he is, whatever they use, sometimes they would use a spear, sometimes, the majority of times possibly a spear, also a, a arrows they would use, bow and arrow, that whenever he would strike, he would always get, hit the target, you can say, it would always penetrate the target. You know, one animal, he's 
another animal he's hunted, a third animal, and they would even, you know, hunt birds. So he even hunted, you know, and captured a few birds. Now he's excited, he's happy. Why? Because throughout the entire day, he's not missed a single shot. You know, normally he'll come on with a few animals. This time he's come on with, you can say, a herd of animals and birds. A flock of birds, my dear viewers. He's captured so much, you know, he's filled an entire, you know, you can say an entire, I don't know what it was used to have, like a caravan, you can say, just with the animals he's hunted. He's happy, you know, it's one of the best days of his hunting. Then he returns to the city. Allahu Akbar. He returns to the city and they see that same man that he had previously, that one-eyed man that he had tied up. There was a one-eyed man who he tied up. He considered this person to be bad luck. Just him coming in this way, he thought that same my entire day is going to be bad. But rather it went good. But rather, my dear viewers of Madan Shalom, it went good. Now when this one-eyed man sees the king, when he sees the king and then he sees all the animals the king has captured, the king has hunted down, he addresses the king. And he says, O oh, king, tell me. Allahu Akbar. He says, O oh, king, tell me. Was I the bad omen or were you the bad omen? Was I bad luck for you? Or were you bad luck for me? The people are confused. How dare he talk to the king like this? The king said, Lame talk. Explain yourself. He says, When you saw me, you spent the rest of your day hunting many animals, more than you've ever hunted before. But, when I saw you, Allahu Akbar, I have been tied here in the scorching heat throughout the entire day. And I have suffered throughout the entire day without food and water. Now, O oh King, you tell me, who is the one who has been bad luck for the other? Me for you or you for me? Allahu Akbar, and he says that the king, he freed him. The viewers of Muhammad Shalom, really, it's a beautiful lesson, this is a beautiful lesson. That, obviously, it wasn't the king who was, you know, bad luck for him. No, that just, that was just a situation which took place. But the reason wasn't the king, no. But what we also learn is that king's mindset. That king's mindset, my dear viewers of Muhammad Shalom, that, you know, the one-eyed man, just him coming in his way, just having this superstition, this was also wrong. This is what we must understand. Now, what is the ruling? Allah has said, Imam Ahl Sunnah, you know, Subhanallah, Imam Ahmad Da Khan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He states that there is no reality of this in Sharia. It is a superstition of people, and Sharia it says that either that when a superstitious thought does come to your mind, then you should in fact act upon the action. You shouldn't stop and leave the action. There is good omen, there's, there's bad omen also. You know, we've heard of bad omen. There's also good omen, my dear viewers. What is a good omen? Good omen is where you think, oh, this is a good sign of something. This is a good sign of something. So, you know, I should do it. Now, if that does come to your mind, then you should do it anyway. Yes, just do it anyway. But if you have a bad omen, even then it says, That if you are to have a bad omen, even then you should do it. What do we mean by a bad omen? A bad omen could be a noise. Sometimes you're going to do something, you're jolly, you're excited about a particular action. And you know, you hear the sound of a donkey, and some say, no, the sound of a donkey is bad luck. The sound of a horse, you know, it is bad luck of ambulance, some, some people believe. So that's it, it's bad luck. This means that this action you're going to do, this is a bad sign. You shouldn't do this action. But rather, my dear viewers, when such a mind 
such a thought comes to your mind, you must try to remove it. And you still should, from though you still should act upon the action, my dear viewers of the Alhamdulillah, you are watching Rise and Shine. Yes, we should rise and shine. We shouldn't allow superstition to harm our minds. No, my dear viewers of the Nisham. Be happy, be jolly, perform good actions. That which is wrong is wrong. If you're going to perform a bad action and you have some sort of thought, you should leave the bad action anyway. Not because of the superstition that you may have, but you should not perform bad actions anyway. You should abandon those. So whether or not you have, you know, you hear the sign of a donkey or whatever it is, you should leave the action. You should abandon the action. Why? Because that action is wrong. So my dear viewers of the channel, Alhamdulillah, and you are watching Rise and Shine. Each and every single day, we have a segment of the day. We have our daily hadith. Let's begin by listening to our reminder of the day. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Dear viewers of Madani channel and dear viewers of Rise and Shine, once again it is time for a reminder within Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillah, today we have a, a beautiful story to listen to and take lessons from there, to learn a few things from there and see what is our reminder for today. It's an amazing story, so let's listen to it and see what we learn from there. It is stated regarding a king, that he, he, he was a great king, and to the extent he, he became so powerful, to the extent that he had no fear of any other king overthrowing him and overpowering him and dominating him. So he's meant to be the greatest of his time. And it was his habit, his routine that he would go for a tour uh, to uh, go out and about in the public. Firstly, to show his own greatness and his might. And at the same time to see if there's any needy person, any poor person who needs help, so he can help them. And now he goes out like this one day and he sees a person on the side in dressed in very old clothing like a beggar. And he says to him, you tell me your desires, tell me what you need and I'll, I will fulfill your needs and your desires. So this beggar, this poor person, he stands up. And he says to the king that you're saying that to me like you can fulfill any of my desires. You can fulfill any of my needs. So now the king says, of course, you tell me your, what is your desire? And he says, are you sure? So now this king, he is, he is, uh, he is in one sense offended because he's meant to be the greatest of his time. And he's being questioned regarding his ability by a beggar, a poor person. So he says, of course, I'll, you tell me what you need and I will fulfill that. So this, he takes out a begging bowl, a bowl, this beggar and this poor person. And he says to the king, okay then, fill this bowl up for me. So now it's very, it seems like a very simple task. So the king signals his guards and his servants are with, his servants are with him that pour in coins and coins of gold and whatever treasure we have, pour that in. As they pour it into the bowl, they disappear. And the bowl is still empty. So now the king orders for more to be poured in and more and more. And eventually, whatever was there, the king runs out. And it's, it is hit, hitting around about afternoon time and the king's run out of whatever he had. So now, still determined and still... Uh, wanting to show how great he is, being stubborn. So he says, he's, he orders his servants to go to the palace and bring, bring back the most uh, valuable jewels and more uh, golden coins and so on and so forth from the treasure. And he says, we must fill this bowl up. We have to fill this bowl up. So they keep trying, they keep trying. And now it's uh, evening time and the king is starting to lose hope that he's never going to be able to fill this ball up. So now he surrenders, he gives up. And he says to this beggar, this poor person, that tell me, what is the secret? 
What is the secret behind this? I've, my, my servants have been trying all day and we cannot fill this bowl up. Tell me the secret behind it. So this, the, this poor person, he says that, oh king, there is, no, there is no secret. Simply, this bowl is made up of human desires. And you can never fill up a bowl that has been made up of human desires because the human desires are never fulfilled. They can never be filled up. Allahu Akbar. So this is the story that we heard today. Can you work out the reminder? So the reminder for today is that indeed human desires are endless till the end of his life. He continues to have desires. And these desires are never fulfilled because when you achieve one goal, then automatically you start eyeing the next step up. When somebody says, I want to be able to earn this much, I want to be able to, I want to have a job where I'm earning this much in life. When he gets to that point, then automatically uh, his demands, his wishes, his desires for to fulfill around himself increase. And then he wants a job in which he can earn much more and then much more. So every time he achieves a target, it's not that he think, okay, he thinks now I've done what I, I needed to do. Now I can busy myself in worship. No, his desires keep growing and he wants to keep hitting that next, next level in life. So even though Islam does not criticize the accumulation of wealth itself, halal income is, itself is not criticized. However, to be so neglectful, to be so heedless that we busy ourselves in pursuit of this wealth and our ambitions. We forget to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is criticized. This is bad. So this is the reminder for us today. We must realize that our desires cannot be fulfilled. Our desires will continue to increase. So we must adopt this habit of being content with what we've been given. If we want to earn a halal livelihood, yes, we can strive for that. But be content at the same time with what we've been given and never let desires be, uh, get in the way. Never let desires get in the way of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to take this on board and realize that we may never be able to fulfill our desires, but also realize that we must never, never abandon worship and salah and so on and so forth, purely uh, seeking to fulfill our desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to remember this lesson, take it on board and pass it on to others. Ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Rise and Shine, alhamdulillahi azzadu. Today we are speaking about superstition. Now I would like to mention a few superstitious, you know, thoughts which do come to mind. And yes, my dear viewers, you know, we do suffer from this disease even in this day and age sadly you know when a lot many people would be able to really understand a few of these now some we will find in particular families in particular backgrounds you can say you know depending on where you are where you are from your parents etc so you know you will find different things apply to different people for example horoscopes my dear viewers of the main channel you know we find these within within newspapers etc and this is something which is general especially within the united kingdom i myself am aware i don't know about other countries but there are a lot of people who believe in this they believe in these horoscopes my dear viewers of Manishal, and upon this you know they begin to bear mazallah that itself is a sin something which is a curse and you know these sort of things they do they think oh yes i'm lucky because i was born you know during this period etc 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 so this is one thing which is impermissible in fact and we do not believe in these things neither are we allowed to believe in these things now another thing which will apply to many of you sweeping up your house doing the hoover after a guest leaves 
Many people think once a guest leaves the house to hoover up after the guest, this is a bad sign. If you do this, then bad luck will come to you. No, my dear viewers, this is not something which has been proved by the Quran or the Hadith or the Ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we will not act upon this. There's no harm in doing the hoover. Another one, my dear viewers. In terms of shoes, placing shoes, one person's shoe on top of another person's shoe. You know, or sometimes walking on top of somebody else. You know, as Allah, we used to hear even when we were children, that if a person lying down, if a person sleeping, and you walk over him, that person is no longer going to grow. Or if you do walk over him, then you must walk back over the other way, my dear viewers. No. You know, these are just things which have come down, you know, passed down the generations, over time and because the you know people have heard them so much they begin to act upon them and they begin to think this is religion no my dear viewers this is not from uh, religion another one and this is this one's very very important i think we may even have to dedicate an entire day to this is daughters very sad my dear viewers honestly very very sad that up until this time up until this day and age there are people that think no, you know, having daughters is bad luck. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that that person who cared for two daughters, it's also mentioned three daughters, it's also mentioned one daughter. Different occasions, my dear viewers of the channel. You know, he is to care for them. He is not to kill them. Mazallah, you know, Islam came during such a period in which people would bury their daughters alive. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited this. This is forbidden, my dear viewers of the channel. Alhamdulillah, you know, we don't live in that time anymore. Yet, what we must understand, it was Islam that first eradicated such practices. So, people did believe that daughters were bad luck. And even nowadays, they don't wish for daughters. But the Prophet ﷺ also stated, and he doesn't give his son's preference over his daughters. He doesn't treat his sons better than he treats his daughters. And he is to bring them up well. Up until they become mature, then he shall be granted paradise. In another hadith states that indeed he will be guaranteed paradise, my dear viewers of Allah. Allahu Akbar. For caring for your daughters, for being kind to your daughters, for giving them a good upbringing. This will be a means for you to enter Jannah. You know, people think, but look, Allahu Akbar. The total opposite of bad luck, my dear viewers of the channel. No. Having a daughter is a good sign. And we should wish to have daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us daughters. Inshallah. Why? Because having daughters is a good sign. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stated, if you are kind to them, if you are nice to them, if you bring them up, without giving your son's preference, then you will be granted jannah due to them. Subhanallah. You know, in the hadith which it was mentioned in regards to that person who brings up three daughters, the companion asked, "Why, well, if he only has two? The Prophet ﷺ said the same, two. Even if he has two, he will be granted Jannah. And the Ruwad, they state that if a person was to ask one, that even if they were to be, the, even if they were to ask Rasulullah ﷺ, that Ya Rasulullah, the companion say this, what if there's only one? Then the Prophet ﷺ would state that even one daughter looking for after her, caring for her, she shall be your means of entry to paradise. So daughters, sadly I don't have enough time to, to speak about the greatness of daughters, my dear viewers of Madhini Shalom. But remember, having a daughter, this is, this is a topic for today, having a daughter is not a sign of you know, evil to come to you, no. But rather, my dear viewers, it is a good sign. Yes, it is a good sign. So we should do dua for daughters. Those who are granted daughters, they should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another one, which is also quite prevalent nowadays, is people believe that if there is a woman who is pregnant and she has lost her child, and if she is to walk past another woman, then the other woman will also lose her child. These practices are not proved by the Sharia. They're not proved by the Quran and by the Sunnah. These are a few examples, inshallah, time allowing, 
I will give you some more examples. Let's first move to our next segment of the day, which is our daily hadith sharif. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that I remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that ma yaribuka leave what puts you in doubt ila ma la yaribuka for those things that don't put you in doubt fa inna sidka tuma'aninatun wa inna al-kizba ribatun for truthfulness brings about tranquility where else Falsehood sows doubt in the heart. Subhanallah, this hadith is a true example of concise speech. It shows the road of true piety and righteousness. In just a few words, the Holy Prophet Wasallam has stated these very beneficial and useful principles. That if a person was sincerely to apply the meaning of this hadith in his or her life, they will find true inner peace, true happiness. Living in the present day and age where numerous practices have come about which were non-existent in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this has led to several differences of opinion ultimately causing a doubt in the mind as to what is right. So what should we do? This hadith puts down a simple rule that ma yaribuka leave what puts you in doubt meaning refrain from that thing that you have a doubt in whether it is good or bad, halal or haram. So the essence of this hadith is the simple rule that if the matter is doubtful, then stay away from it. إِلَى مَا لَا يَرِيبُكَ And exchange the doubtful matters for those things which don't put you in doubt, that turn away from them towards the good and the halal. فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ تُمَعْنِينَةٌ for truthfulness brings about tranquility. This serves as an encouragement to stay away from the doubtful things. Why? Because as believers, as mu'mineen, when we perform acts that are completely free from doubts, then this puts our heart to rest. We feel the pleasure in doing such actions. Whereas getting involved in doubtful matters, this leaves the heart uneasy, leading to a troubled mind and soul. Subhanallah, if we were to act upon this beautiful hadith, the chances of us getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are also higher. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are cautious in following his commands and staying away from those things which he azza wa jal has forbidden us from. And no doubt, when we shall try to stick with the halal things and stay away from the doubtful and haram matters, the chances of our du'as being accepted also exceptionally become higher and most importantly we should constantly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides our heart towards truthfulness and keeps it away from falsehoodness. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Let's move to our fruit segment and then we shall inshallah conclude our program. Today we shall be hearing a little about pineapples. Yes inshallah let's listen to some information in regards to pineapples. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Pineapple. The pineapple is a delicious tropical fruit. Celebrated for centuries, not only for its unique taste, but also for its miraculous health benefits. Eat a cup of pineapple chunks daily to reap some of its amazing benefits such as boosting immunity, improving bone and eye health, 
aiding in digestion and even accelerating weight loss. It is also anti-inflammatory in nature and helps in curing coughs and colds and accelerating weight loss. The pineapple, also known as inanus, is covered with thorny spikes and topped with hard waxy leaves which may total up to 30 per fruit. The fruit is up to a foot long and has a combination of sweet and tart taste. The pineapple belongs to the Bromelicea family and is a composite fruit made of coalesced berries that grow at the crown of a fruiting tree. The pineapple is chock full of several health benefits due to its nutrient content. It contains bromelain, protein, carbohydrates, sugar, soluble and insoluble dietary fiber. The vitamins in these fruits include vitamin A, vitamin C, thymine, vitamin B6 and folate. Minerals like potassium, copper, manganese, Calcium, sodium, and magnesium are also found in pineapples. These tropical fruits are low in calories and high in water content, which means they can be a part of weight loss diet when consumed in moderation. This fruit can be added to your daily diet in many forms, most commonly by cutting them into chunks to snack on. Crushed pineapple can also be added to cookies, bars, ice creams, yogurts and various other desserts. Fresh pineapple juice or smoothie is another popular and delicious way to start your day. The pineapple upside down cake is an all time favorite of food enthusiasts around the world. Antioxidant rich juice is also enjoyed in the tropical drink pina colada. Pineapple leaves are used as wallpaper and in sealing insulation. The pineapple fragrance oils are also popular due to their tropical touch. The pineapple fruit is known to offer several health benefits, some being a boost immunity and treats sinus. It aids in digestion, it prevents cancer, reduces inflammation, reduces arthritis pain also. So my dear summer brothers and viewers of Madrid channel, increase your consumption of pineapples. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam subhanallah pineapples. My dear viewers of Madrid channel, a tasty beautiful fruit undoubtedly. It's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadly, we have no time left for this program, my dear viewers of Mother Inshallah. Please continue to watch Rise and Shine each and every single day, each and every single morning, and generally always watch Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah